So again, ignoring the law. Awesome, you're legally disqualified too. Have a good day. This will be going to appeals and you are now also included in the federal lawsuit. Goodbye. Pierce County Superior Court is now in session. Honorable Philip K. Sorensen presiding. Good morning. First matter uh, in our docket this morning is Juliet Gaines versus Daniel Gaines, cause number 043000099-7. If the parties could introduce themselves for the record, please. Your Honor, my name is Steve Downing and I represent Juliet Gaines Parker. Good morning, Your Honor. Oh, I just want to be on. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Juliet Parker, used to be Juliet Gaines. I am Steve's client and I'm the mother of Faith. Sir? Daniel Gaines, pro se party to the matter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gaines, your motion, you got 10 minutes, please. Mr. Downey, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Gaines, you got 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, the commissioner in this matter erred in several significant ways. The commissioner uh, conflated meanings, legal meanings of words and ignored standing case law and case precedent from the state appellate courts. She stated that the orders with a complete lack of jurisdiction, uh, defective proof of service and everything else are voidable, but not void. Supreme our court case law from the state of Washington is a def one for example a few examples a default order order entered without notice to an appearing party is void and we need not consider the passage of time or rather a meritorious defense exists. Mr. That's Gaines, uh, Mr. Gaines, I need you to. This is all being reported by a court reporter, so they need to be able to understand what you're saying. So you need to slow down your speed just a little bit, okay? I, if I'm limited in time, I have to be able to clearly establish the record. So this can, so whenever I file my notice of appeal, the records clearly established for the appellate courts. Okay, go ahead. I guess you'll have to balance between having a record that's clear and a record that has inaudibles in it. So go ahead. Okay, well, then I'll jump ahead. Anyway, that case comes from uh, Colicuro v. Berger in Washington Appellate Court's 2002 case. Stems from, uh, the, the ruling stems from Allstate Insurance v. Connie, a 1994 case. Even uh, State Rule 60B, a court may vacate a void judgment at any time. Uh, 60B states in pretty part any, uh, on motion and upon such terms as are just, the court may relieve a party or his legal representative from a final judgment order or procedure for the following reason, reasons. Reason five is the judgment is void. A judgment is void if entered without personal jurisdiction, without subject matter jurisdiction, or if entered by a court which lacks the inherent power to enter the particular order involved. In re marriage of Ortiz, citing Dyke v. Dyke. Also, that comes from Robertson v. Commonwealth. The commissioner relied upon the fact that I didn't file a motion to vacate the orders to reach her conclusion when I followed the rules. I filed a motion for modification, which according to the initial filing from 2004 says it's either every three to five years a modification can be filed. After I filed the modification, I launched a direct attack on the child support order being void. Washington case law and standing precedent allows for that. And in fact, once it's challenged and once it's proven to be void on its face or on the record, invalidity need only appear on face of a judgment alone that judgment or order may be said to be intrinsically void or void on its face. If lack of jurisdiction appears from the record, that's Crockett Oil v. Uh, Company v. Effie from Missouri Appellate Courts. 
Washington appellate courts, a void judgment is a judgment decree or ordered entered by a court which lacks jurisdiction of the parties or of the subject matter or which lacks the inherent power to make or enter the particular order involved. Turner v. Briggs from the Washington appellate courts, 1999. On the record, there exists a defective proof of service and a complete lack of jurisdiction evidenced by the fact that the proof of service was allegedly served upon a Louisiana residence in violation of Louisiana service laws. Service laws, as in my filings, it's included as evidence in the uh, revision, it lists the Louisiana statute, which states in part, the pertinent part, that uh, a private citizen can only effectuate legal service after a sheriff's uh, uh, parish sheriff has been unable to effectuate service 10 days after, in fact, and that person must be a legal resident of the state of Louisiana. According to their own admissions, Ms. Ross, Ms. Roth, who was the one who allegedly served the documents, was a resident or is still and was a resident at the time of the state of Louisiana means service is defective. With the lack of, with Louisiana residents, all parties involved, the minor child, Ms. Parker and myself, the state of Washington lack complete jurisdiction via subject matter and, and uh, personal jurisdiction, as well as the fact as it lacked, that it lacked the inherent power to issue any orders whatsoever in, in relation to this matter. Further, the proof of service from 2004, it states on there under point five, under section five for other, I witnessed the following after, after is the key word, serving the restraining order. Respondent called petitioner's father to get permission to take petitioner's truck without her permission whenever the truck was in her father's name. Then she had no, she then had no way to remove her belongings back to Tacoma. They can't go back to Tacoma when she's a legal resident of the state of Washington, but I digress. I had to buy her a plane ticket to fly home. Now, the most important sentence is the last one. Respondent took petitioner's cell phone without her permission. That would have been after I was allegedly served the restraining order and Ms. Parker's most recent declaration, which changed from the previous one, now states that there was police officers there, which means if there was police officers there that served me a restraining order, had I have taken anything from Ms. Parker's hand without her per consent, I would have been arrested. There's no allegations of me being arrested. There's no evidence of any uh, uh, police report or arrest records or anything else on file. In fact, in the entirety of the 2004 matter where my property was allowed to be awarded to Ms. Parker via a void uh, divorce decree, my, child, my money was stolen through child support via a void child support order and my parental rights were basically all but terminated via a void parenting plan and on the record, there's a complete lack of jurisdiction and a complete lack of power. There's so many errors in this case, it's astounding. I brought up the fraud upon the court that Mr. Downing is clearly guilty of, intentionally filing knowingly perjured documents aimed at affecting the outcome of a case, which is affecting the judicial machinery itself, which is clearly established in the 7th, 8th, and 9th Circuit Court of Appeals with plenty of case law to support, all again on the record in my filings. Let's see, we also have multiple members of the judiciary who are legally disqualified under 28 USC 455A. Uh, we, have mul we have several members of the judiciary guilty of, uh, themselves guilty of fraud upon the courts. We have the courts ignoring standing case precedent and standing appellate court and state Supreme Court case law, making up the law as they go. I have multiple commissioners uh, and judges uh, for uh, that I can prove conspiracy against, conspiracy against rights, conspiracy, the federal statute, uh, just conspiracy. I can prove the depl deprivation of rights, uh, uh, deprivation of rights under color of law. Again, all you have all the evidence in front of you. Even the child's birth certificate has been filed and you have in front of you and it shows that the child was born in the state of Louisiana. In Ms. Parker's original filings in 2004, which again, you have in front of you, she even states that the only child, that the only state the child had ever lived in prior to her filing was the state of Louisiana. She lived in the state of Louisiana with both her legal parents who were married at the time. As such, she is not under the jurisdiction of the state of Washington. I have never been under the state jurisdiction of the state of Washington ever. I have never been a resident of the state of Washington. 
the courts have never established jurisdiction over me. The, what they used to establish jurisdiction in the 2004 order is the extremely ambiguous language of the child may have been conceived in the state of Washington. Standing case law and precedent from the state of Washington, Coleco v. Superior Court, which uh, derives, or uh, Coleco v. Uh, Washington, which derives from uh, International Shoe v. Washington, or it is Coleco v. S Superior Court, my apologies, which states that whereas the courts may obtain jurisdiction over the child through UCAAJ, in order to establish jurisdiction for child support for an out-of-state father, it requires significant context. And context ends in an S, which means plural. The language may have is nowhere near the legal requirement to satisfy significant context. And yet I still have to fight this. And this is ultimately going to go to the appeals court because members of the judiciary refuse to comply with state and federal law. They refuse to comply with their judicial canons. They violate the law. They violate my uh, uh, protected rights, especially due process, 14th Amendment. I won't even get into a myriad of other things. I can also well, prove the racketeering. Gaines, all right, Mr. Gaines, you got two minutes. Okay. I can prove the racketeering 18 USC 1962. I can prove multiple RICO violations on the state through the child support Title IV-D program, as well as through the foster care program, and it all exists on the record. I am attacking the devoid divorce decree and the void parenting plan that deprived me of my parental rights collaterally, which is allowable again under the state precedent, as I've already cited and is in the filings that you have in front of you. Finally, we have Howlett v. Rose, 1990 U.S. Supreme Court. Federal law is, apply, is applicable in state courts. In fact, state judges do not have any choice but to comply with federal law in matters where the supremacy clause is in effect. Anytime you're dealing with a matter of a protected right or a law that's derived from the Constitution, the supremacy clause is in effect. Since we're dealing with violations of due process, which is the 14th Amendment protected and parental rights, which is protected by multiple constitutional amendments, the supremacy clause is in fact in effect, which means how it be roses in effect, which means the federal codes that are in these di in the filings of mine that you have in front of you are to be enforced and it's not discretionary matter. The courts are technically, according to the Supreme Court, not allowed to disagree because of a uh, because of discretion, because of a difference of opinion, because they disagree with the superiority of its authority or anything else, yet repeatedly been cited, repeatedly been violated and ignored all in the courts in the state of Washington. And it's not just Pierce County, it's multiple counties. I can prove two different counties guilty of the same thing just in my case alone. Okay, thank you. Mr. Downing, you have up to 10 minutes. Your Honor, I will not take that long. 17 years ago, the Pierce County Superior Court entered a decree of dissolution, a parenting plan and an order of child support after finding that it had jurisdiction and that service was proper. This is only an attempt by Mr. Gaines to set aside a parenting plan which is no longer relevant as the child is now an adult, uh, a divorce of uh, which he never contested. Uh, and the real crux of this matter is he's trying to set aside an order of child support uh, in which he is now $69,000 in arrears. The state of Washington had proper jurisdiction. He was properly served uh, by Ms. Waugh uh, in the presence of law officers. And this action currently pending is frivolous. That's all I have to say. Okay, Mr. Gaines, you get one minute to reply if you like. You don't have to, but if you'd like to. I would like to, yes, Your Honor. Am I unmuted? I don't know if it worked. You're in. Okay. Uh, what Mr. Downing is saying is contradictory to the direct evidence that the, that you have sitting right in front of you if you have the documents I filed right in front of you. 
the defective proof of service and in, in, in violation of Louisiana law. Again, the, the citing of the laws and the documents in front of you. The birth certificate, which shows out of state, the child's birth was out of state and she lived in a different state entirely, which proves lack of jurisdiction. Mr. Downing makes these claims, but yet in the entirety of all of this matter, all the times I've made these, these challenges to jurisdiction, not one single piece of evidence has been filed by Mr. Downing. Not one single legal code or piece of case law to support anything he says has been cited by Mr. Downing. The records since February of 2020, when, I, when this got involved with Ms. Parker's criminal arrest, up to now will all show that no judge or anybody has been able to make any legal sightings, which is in itself a violation of the federal rules of civil procedure as it applies to the states in pertinent part, a decision, whereas a decision maker does not have to go into explicit legal detail, a reason, a legal reason is required to be given along with the evidence used to come to such re legal conclusion is to be pointed to in all court orders issued. Every single order that's been issued by the state of Washington is missing any legal reason and any evidence at all. The record itself actually on Ms. Parker's uh, entire behalf is completely void of any evidence whatsoever. Okay, uh, I've been asked to review the ruling of Pro Tem Commissioner Amanda Cook. Uh, in her findings, she indicates that the respondent's objection regarding jurisdiction has been noted but can't be addressed upon a petition to modify child support. Uh, your petition calls itself a petition to modify, but what it really is, is uh, an attack on the petition itself. Uh, that's not appropriate for this particular sort of proceeding. Uh, I'm going to uh, decline to revise the commissioner. In my judgment, she got it right. Uh, the proof that's in the file indicates that there is jurisdiction. <laughs> Saying there's not jurisdiction does not make it so. Uh, you see- Point of, point of fact. Mr. Gaines, it's my- Point of fact. Mr. Gaines, it's my turn to speak. Uh, you're seeking to modify the order, but you say you actually give no basis to modify anything. Uh, you're challenging the jurisdiction uh, of the underlying order, but there's uh, there's nothing in front of me that indicates that there's any defect in jurisdiction. I'm denying your motion to revise. Point of fact. Mr. Mr. Downing, do you have a, an order that I can? Uh, I do, Your Honor, and I will send it to Ms. Uh, Schmuck uh, immediately. And if you'd email a copy of that to Mr. Gaines, that'd be great. Absolutely. All right. So again, ignoring the law. Awesome. You're legally disqualified too. Have a good day. This will be going to appeals and you are now also included in the federal lawsuit. Goodbye. <laughs>